teach you how to prepare for your marks, how to execute your marks well, and how to see the grades that you want to see if you were to sit that paper tomorrow. This is way different to real exams. Ask your teachers, hey, miss, using your mock results to enhance your actual results. What is in the key to marks is to not waste. That's when you're going to struggle to retain information. Why you got it wrong and how you're going to not get it wrong again. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Cheryl. One sec. My name is Cheryl, for anybody who's new, I just finished year 13, and today's video I'm going to be talking all things marks. So, a week or two ago, I actually received an email from an international student just asking me to create a video about mocks, and I thought, okay, I'm going to take this opportunity to literally break down mocks for everyone, year 11, 10, 12, 13. So yeah, this video is all about mocks. So you're in school, maybe it's an assembly, I don't know what it is, but your teachers tell you, oh, by the way, guys, you have mocks in three weeks. You're looking around like, what? <laughs> Wait, but yeah, she's not joking. You do have mocks in three weeks and then they give you the timetable and it's a whole thing Mocks are coming around the corner. If the second you find out you have mocks Put the date in a calendar. Put the date on Notion. Put it on the timetable. Put it on the fridge So everyone in your house knows you have mocks coming up. Not planning at all is planning to fail That's probably not the same, but it's genuinely true and I saw that physically for myself Don't prepare for your mocks. Don't let them be sprung upon you In fact, if you can find out when your mocks are before they're even announced, even better Better. Go on that school timetable, ask over, just know what's happening. It's gonna make it a lot easier for you when it comes to planning. Cool. So now you have your mock in your timetable. You know when they're coming, you're expecting them, and you're ready to conquer them. The next part I want you to do is rank your subjects. If you do 10, 13 subjects because you're doing your GCSE, rank them from 1 to 13. But in a subject that almost scares you the most, if you were to sit that paper tomorrow, how would it go? Is the question you should ask yourself. And if you feel scared about sitting that paper tomorrow, put that subject nearer to the bottom. It's less about ranking the subjects and more so about ranking your ability to answer questions in each subject. If you know maths comes a bit more easily to you or you've done a lot more maths practice over the year, my mother is texting. Leave me alone. So good. Now, once you've ranked your subjects, to be fair, this step should come before your ranking step. I want you to find out exactly what is coming up in your mocks. Do not assume that everything you've been revising is in your mocks. Do not assume that they're gonna give you the whole entire paper in your mocks. Ask your teachers, hey, miss, what is in these mocks specifically? Because more time in mocks, they cut out some subject, I meant topic, so that it can fit within the time frame. But make sure you know what is coming up inside that mock exam. Do not revise things that are irrelevant. This is way different to real exams. That is why this video is targeted to mocks. Okay, so back to your steps to do. You found out when they are. You found out what exactly is inside these mocks. Thirdly, you're ranking your subject from one to 10 or one to three based on ability. Find out which ones you need to give more time time to in order to have a uniform set of results. My camera keeps shaking. Split your time accordingly. So now you've got either two months, maybe three weeks, whatever, how long you've got to your mark. It's time to start reviewing the content. Knowing the content is great, but do you know how to answer the question? So you can do this two ways. You can either go straight in, try a practice paper, mark it and see how you do. You might know more than you think and you might perform better than you expected. However, if you're someone who knows, okay, I'm not ready for these mocks. I don't know much about it. Go straight in with some content. When I say content, I'm referring to intaking information. This can be in the form of flashcards, videos, quizzes, Seneca. I will link resources down below, but it's very easy to take in content. If you're at a stage where you think, okay, I might not do too bad. Let me just test and see what I know, go ahead and go to physics and maths tutor, find your subject and try a practice paper, ensuring that you're only doing the topics that are coming up in your mock. The key to mocks is to not waste your time doing things that are not coming up in your mock. Now again, I'll reiterate, if you are in year 13 or year 11 and your mocks mean a lot less, then don't just focus on topics inside your mock. Focus on revising for all the topics in your final exams and use mocks more as a practice test than a final test, okay? So once you've either got your content in or you tried your exact questions, you're gonna analyze what was it that I did worse at. Integration is amazing, but every time you try to differentiate, you just get it mixed up. You wanna start doing differentiation practice questions. Ooh, my legs are home. And once you have identified your topics by week, you're gonna keep on practicing those questions in a consistent time before your mock. So this cycle will repeat. I don't wanna to give too much of a rigid structure because everyone is different, but if you have any explicit questions, please comment them down below. I'm more than happy to respond. I love responding. I love talking to you guys, so keep commenting down below. Like, someone will comment like a one line comment, and I'll respond with like four lines because I just want to talk. <laughs> just want to talk. <laughs> 
I'm joking, I'm not joking, but I'm joking. I hope that will make sense regarding your lead up to mop. And just my advice is consistency is key. I don't know how many times I've said that in a video, but if you're consistent with your revision, you will see results. If you are a crammer and all you know how to do is revise once a week, that's when you're gonna struggle to retain information. So as long as you're doing it frequently, and frequently literally just means how many times you do it or how many times it appears, like the number of times. If you revise a high number of times rather than a long amount of time, then you're gonna see real results. Keep it consistent, keep it consistent, keep it consistent and avoid cramming. If you do get in a situation where you need to cram, I do have a video about cramming. I need to make a different one because that one was for science. Um, I will make a video about cramming because I am a bit, a bit familiar with it. I'm too familiar with cramming, but I don't advise it. I know some people advise cramming, but I will never advise cramming because it is stressful and in the long run, it is unsustainable. Then I want to talk about mocks themselves. Naturally, as people, I believe every time you finish an exam, you come home, revise for the next one, and we just keep going at it. As humans, I feel like we should stop almost going into survival mode during mocks and have a more relaxed approach. I'll put the statistics up, but when you have a relaxed approach to a difficult task, you tend to perform better. So come towards your mocks, come at your mocks with the mindset that, okay, I'm going to try my best, I've done my revision, and I'm just going to push through these mocks and don't go too like survival mode have to destroy every paper, have to know everything, like honestly, it's fine. The last thing I want to talk about for mocks is using your mock results to enhance your actual results. When you get those mock results back, do not just throw them to the side. You want to analyze every mock paper and find out what you got wrong, why you got it wrong, and how you're going to not get it wrong again. Best way to do this is scan your mock papers. A lot of schools don't let you take the mock papers home. They keep it there just in case schools have to close down again, and then they have some sort of evidence for you. They don't really let you take it home. But what you can do is go on note, go on the notes app, open a new note, and go to this scan icon and if you click scan documents you can literally scan if this was your mock results and you'd scan the doc i didn't even click the button does it itself and then look you've got it in a like pdf form scan your mocks and then and then especially if you have an ipad or whatever you have the markup option on notes and you can just literally go over your mock and start highlighting the things you got wrong see what i mean you can literally go through your mocks and analyze them all on the notes app that's just a hack if you didn't know and you can also do this on good notes just ensure you review your mocks and create flashcards on the things you got wrong and just make sure that you're not going to get something wrong again in class when they do go through your mocks hopefully your school does that because my school definitely did make sure you're like literally just take pictures of the mark scheme on the board and be a mark scheme warrior because at the end of the day the person that writes the things closest to the mark scheme or the person that writes exactly what is on the mark scheme is the person that gets the most marks knowing the content is great but do you know how to answer the question how the exam board want it that's the question you need to ask yourself. So use your mocks as a chance to get familiar with the mark scheme if you're not already. And when you are post mocks, you're gonna find revising for the real thing much easier. For that person that emailed me, honestly, just know your timetable and begin to schedule content and exam questions within the week coming up to your mocks. I hope that video helped you and advised you on everything you need to do prior to your mocks, for your mocks, during your mocks, and after your mocks. If you have any more questions, comment them down below. I'm wishing you all the best for the mock exams coming up. I love you all so, so much, and Jesus loves you even... Bruh, relax. <laughs> Love it.